welcome back to my channel. My name is Ashley. I'm sure you can tell by the title a little bit about what this video is about already. So this is what I got for you. Mm, smells good. Blueberry, I think. Anybody else still love these markers? Yeah. So like anything in life, happiness takes practice. Right, Opie? I like to think of it like a muscle. If you want a strong core, you do abdominal workouts. The topic of happiness has fascinated me ever since I was seven or eight years old when I realized that I wasn't as happy as the other kids. I didn't get it. I was, I was happy sometimes, but not all the time. So I know that's not what happiness is all about. No one is happy all of the time. And that's a big part of how to be happy is accepting that there's more emotions to feel and explore and happiness isn't the end all be all. It's a great emotion, it's awesome, but we didn't come here to be happy 100% all the time. I've always been fascinated by how happiness seems to be a natural way of being for some people and not for others. And that started to fascinate me as early as seven years old, seven or eight. So I went on to study psychology and philosophy in university. I ended up dropping out in my second year and becoming a life coach, massage therapist, Reiki practitioner, and a yoga teacher. So I have two things that I want to talk about today that I know for sure if you implement these tools in your life, you will start feeling better and happiness will become a regular emotion in your spectrum, which is awesome. It will become your natural state of being, your go-to, your neutral state. And it might not always be, whoa, like happy, elated, party, but it can be a state of happy peacefulness and contentness instead of anxiety, instead of stress, instead of fear, instead of worry. Choosing a path of happiness is very brave. It's our natural state of being and it's the way that we are meant to be here on this planet. Now that I see that and know that and feel that and I've improved my own life in, in such a big way, I am compelled to share this and hopefully help somebody else along the way as well. Because I say this all the time, there were so many people that were there for me and helped me. This is my way of paying it forward. So without further ado, how to be happy. Even though a lot of things in the world of happiness and self-help and self-love and all that stuff, any type of motivational speaker, spiritual teacher, they often say the same things, but it's for a good reason. And I think it's important for new people and more people to keep up the conversation because we can say things in a different way that may resonate with somebody in a way that it never has before. So that's why it's so important. Repetition is huge. Eventually when you hear something enough, you start to get it more. It becomes a part of your brain and your way of being. So here's two things at the very basic basics that will help you to be happy that you can start implementing in your life today. Okay. Appreciation and gratitude. Now stay with me because I think you may be interested in hearing what I have to say about these two things because I see things differently. I mean, we all see things differently, but in my opinion, they are similar, but totally different. And I really believe that you need both. So here's how I feel about appreciation and gratitude. Gratitude is more like a daily exercise or an active meditation. That's what I think about gratitude. And honestly, taking a moment to practice gratitude twice a day will change your life. So ideally in the morning and before bed, and eventually it'll just become a habit that you do all the time. It becomes something you naturally do in the morning and naturally before bed. So it might feel hard at first to get the momentum going, but eventually it'll stick. That's when really cool things start to happen. And honestly, when I do it, when I just take this moment to feel present and feel gratitude for that, I'm at the point now where my heart flutters. Sometimes it brings tears to my eyes and I'm alone and it's, beautiful it's a whole thing <laughs> I love it okay so now appreciation feels different to me appreciation feels more like a state of being so gratitude feels like an exercise like an active thing and appreciation feels more like a state of being so appreciation to me feels like little choices that you make all throughout your day all the time and then the reason why I wanted to like really talk about these two and how they feel different to me is because people often say attitude of gratitude and yeah that sounds great and it definitely has a ring to it but to me it's more about an attitude of appreciation that feels different to me and that makes more sense to me when I feel gratitude I am deeply moved 
like I said, my heart flutters, I'm alone, I'm feeling appreciation, tears come to my eyes. It's like this whole thing. So I'm not going to have an attitude of gratitude all day. I'm not going to walk around my life deeply moved by everything all the time. No one would want to be around me. No, I, w I wouldn't want to be around me. I wouldn't want to be around somebody like that. But an attitude of appreciation? That feels good to me. That feels more sustainable and normal and uh, something I can get on board with. Because the difference between a bad day or a good day is how much or how little you can appreciate what's going on around you, within you and outside of you. The parts within your control and the stuff outside of your control. If you always find something to appreciate, you will always be that much closer to happier. If you take a peek here at Abraham Hicks scale of emotions, which you can't really see. The highest emotion is joy, knowledge, empowerment, freedom, love, appreciation, and passion. The lowest state of emotions are fear, grief, depression, despair, powerlessness. When you find something to appreciate, you can move up the scale of emotions. So it goes from fear to jealousy, hatred, revenge, anger, discouragement, blame, worry. Do you see how it's getting a little bit lighter? Even though these emotions are still negative or fear-based emotions, it's the energy behind it feels a little lighter. Anger has more energy to it, has more life to it, has more momentum to it than depression. When you're angry, you get stuff done. When you're depressed, you can't move. You know what I mean? So when you find something to, to appreciate, you can start to move up the scale of emotions. So from worry, we go to doubt, disappointment, overwhelmment, frustration, irritation, pessimism, boredom, and above boredom, we get to contentment. It's so interesting. You go from frustrated to pessimistic to bored to content. And content's not a bad place to be. That's a great place to be. Then from content, you can go to hopeful, optimistic, a positive expectation, enthusiastic, eager, happy, passionate, and enjoying appreciation, empowerment, freedom, love, all at the top. So I think this scale of emotions is so fascinating. It's important to acknowledge that our emotions work on a scale. So we're not going to go from being jealous to feeling joyful within minutes. That's just not realistic. That's not, I'd say that's being pretty hard on yourself, but perhaps you can go from jealous to doubtful and disappointed. And that's actually a higher vibration emotion and closer to happiness. So it's kind of cool. It's kind of a different way of looking at things and helps you be a little more conscious of your emotions and, and hopefully not feel so um, over encumbered by it. Because we all have these emotions, we're all human, but there's little ways we can move up the scale. If you always find something to appreciate, even if you're down here, if you find something to appreciate, you'll start to move up the scale of emotions. So like I said, the difference between a good day and a bad day is your ability to appreciate how, how much or how little you appreciate what's going on around you. So let me explain a little further. So the recipe for a bad day is finding things to complain about all day. If you find something to complain about every minute, every hour, all day, you are in the opposite state of appreciation. You are low on the spectrum of emotions. You will find it very hard to be happy if you're complaining and finding things to complain about all day. Complaining is a choice and appreciation is a choice as well. It's really easy to complain. It's really easy to get caught into that mindset. And honestly, you may be doing it and you're unaware of it. So if this video is bringing it to your attention and you're like, whoa, yeah, I do complain a lot. I didn't realize that's actually connected to my emotions. Don't be hard on yourself. It's all cool. Now that you're aware of it, you can do something to change it. When I was in uh, my massage therapy program, uh, one of my teachers made us do this exercise where we had to put a, a rubber band, it was like a blue rubber band on our wrist and we had to try to not complain for 30 days and if we complained we had to switch it to the other hand so it was kind of a fun exercise because some people were switching it all day so every time they complained they had to like physically do something so it made you really aware of how much you're complaining so if that's something you want to try just to see because we often are really unaware of it and that's really sad because it affects how you feel all the time which affects your whole life which affects your happiness and this video is about how to be happy so you know? Okay, we all ended up doing it, but I think some of us were able to go a few days at a time or a week at a time without switching it. And then finally it was like, I'm committing to this. And the way we committed to it, every time I wanted to complain, replacing it with a compliment. 
So let's say I'm waiting in line and I'm in a rush. It's a perfect situation to be complaining, finding that one little thing to appreciate, whether it's having a moment to yourself, having time to check your email, getting to listen to the rest of your podcast, appreciating the fact that you're alive, really simple, or appreciating the smell of the person in front of you. Maybe it smells like your grandmother did and it's just this like comforting thing. I don't know, whatever, whatever works for you, you can use. So every time you want to complain, actively and intentionally try to find something to appreciate instead. Replace the thought. I hope that this is helpful and useful. Comment below, let me know how it goes. Let me know how many days you can go without complaining and how it's changed your life because I'm positive that it will. And I want to hear about it. Appreciation and gratitude, these are two things that helped me immensely. But remember, it's like a muscle. And these are exercises. You're not gonna get abs in one day and happiness doesn't come overnight. And as you know by now, when I say happiness, I don't mean happy, elated all the time. I mean being in a place where you can move up the scale of emotions quicker or where you can rest at contentment and have a higher state of emotion be your natural state of being, closer to appreciation instead of down low in those low vibe, low complainy vibes. You feel me? (laughs) Happiness won't last all the time. It's not supposed to. It's how it is. There's contrast in life. There's fear and there's love. The two polar opposite energies, the contrast that mesh and combine and make life interesting. And it's funny, often we complain about contrast. We complain when things aren't perfect or don't go our way. We're complaining about things that are outside of our control. And it's super unhealthy and harmful to your state of well-being and to your mental health. Honestly, if there's something going on that is super uncomfortable, like, I don't know, a world pandemic or something, where no one can be close together, hugging or dancing, or in the same room with anyone, like if something like that was going on, I'd appreciate that I can breathe. I appreciate the clean water that I have. I appreciate the safe home that I have. I appreciate my roommate and all the quality time we've had together during this time. I could be pissed that I can't go to the gym or the spa or my favorite restaurants or hug and see all my friends and family and dance with people at concerts and shows. Because I feel all those things. I'm a human. I could complain about those all the live long day and post about it on social media and remind other people that they should be pissed too. I could find things that annoy me about my apartment or my roommate and I could focus on those things incessantly and drive myself crazy again with things that are outside of your control. Or I can take this time to practice. Practice appreciation all day. Practice gratitude at least once or twice or three times a day. I can practice going within and finding the peace within me, the peace that I seek, which is always right here within me. It sounds cheesy, but the peace is not out in the world right now. That's not where we're going to find it. It's not, but we can find it here within ourselves. You can practice that. You can make the choice to practice that. So if I want peace, First, I embrace it within me. I fill myself up, take really good care of myself. Body, mind, and soul, self-care to the max, finding things to appreciate, practicing gratitude. And now I'm equipped to go out into the world and put more peace and love out there too. Because that is one thing that I can control externally. And that's the kind of energy that I'm putting out into the world. Regardless of what craziness is going on out there, I get to choose what kind of energy I want to put out. And then finally, my last piece of advice, if you really want to be happy, we have to stop feeling sorry for ourselves, and we have to stop feeling sorry for other people. It's a low vibration, energy, and emotion, and it's not productive and it doesn't help. You know, that's kind of hard to hear. So instead of feeling sorry for yourself or feeling sorry for other people, be proactive. That is a much better, higher vibration, emotion, energy. That's the type of vibe, being proactive, that'll get things done and make a difference in the world. Feeling sorry doesn't help anybody ever, especially yourself. So instead, be proactive, do something to give love to yourself, and then do something to give love to the world. And just by giving love to yourself, you are giving love to the world, by the way. My friend said this to me yesterday, you can't thrive without adding to the thriving of the planet. I love that. 
So yeah, about almost 800 million people don't have clean water. The Amazon is in trouble. Animals are suffering. The earth needs us. So instead of feeling sorry and feeling helpless, find a cause and a way to contribute to it. It doesn't have to be financially. Reposting on your social media platform is enough to contribute to awareness and momentum of whichever cause it is you choose to support and help. So let's get happy by practicing gratitude, appreciation, putting more love into ourselves and into the world and not feeling sorry for ourselves and not feeling sorry for anybody else, but being proactive by supporting causes in whatever way that we can and filling ourselves up first so that we can give that loving energy into the world. So thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and good luck on your journey. I know it's not always easy, but you can't give up on yourself. You're the one person that really needs to never give up on you. At the end of the day, you are the person that you are with all of the time. You deserve to feel good and you deserve to feel happy. And sometimes it takes work and sometimes it takes years. But little by little, just like the scale of emotions, you will improve and you'll get closer to having happiness as a natural state of being. And that's what we're meant to be here for, to have a good time, to feel happy, to enjoy our life. We're here to thrive and experience the full spectrum of emotions, but especially happiness. It's like the best one. And you really, 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 really deserve to know what that feels like a lot more of the time. If you'd like some extra help from me personally, I'll put some links below where you can book a life coaching call or a Reiki session. Comment below three things that you can appreciate right now. It could be the littlest thing or anything that you can think of. Let's spread and share this kind of energy in the world right now. See you soon. Thank you so much for watching. Mwah.